have a quorum with all board members present. Thank you all for being here. And thank you all for being here. I'll see you very studious out there tonight working on your cell phones. I know what that is. Just thumbs up, thumbs down. Yes, every once in a while give us an update, please. All right, at this point in time we'll discuss our October 18th rate of board meeting agenda items. Dr. Randall. Mr. President, the first item is asking the board to approve the 2018-19 district improvement and district improvement and campus improvement plans. And we do have a presentation for the board. Mr. Steenbergen, members of the board, and Dr. Randall, we're happy to share with you this evening our upcoming district and improvement plan. It has three major areas of focus this year, or three goals that we'll be working on. Goal one is instructional leadership and programming. Goal two is a major system and program review. This is probably the largest part or the bulk of the district improvement plan. And then goal three is our safe and responsible school environment. I think I need to go home. Catherine fell off the table. We have to start again. Set of papers on top of the mic. Yeah, I'm just going to go. Sorry about that. That's quite all right. There are several pieces we've integrated into the plan as we did last year. One of those are the commissioner's mandate, recruit, support, and retain teachers and principals, build a foundation of reading and math, connect high school to career and college, and improve low-performing schools. And then listed there from TEA are the enablers for those particular priorities. So we'll begin with goal one, instructional leadership and programming. And essentially the full statement of the goal is that our principals will be empowered through instructional leadership to deliver consistent, planned, monitored instructional programs that meet the needs and ensure the success of all of the students. And then those are our indicators for success on that particular goal. Through the Holdsworth Center, we have come to understand that basically a campus rises and falls on the leadership strengths of the principal. And so we want to focus on giving our principals every opportunity to develop and grow some of the best practices and current research in the field. Underneath this particular goal on page eight, you'll see the superintendent's SMART goals. So under each one of the goals that we've captured and included the commissioner's priorities in, we've also listed our local SMART goals that we would like to integrate into that. The first performance objective for this particular goal in the Department of Academics focuses very strictly and strongly on principal development. The goal statement is there in the book as long as the activities and strategies that would be implemented there. Goal performance objective number two is activating four of the six stages of the leadership pipeline. We've already begun those and begun several cohorts and collaboratives within the district to support our first year APs in induction 1.0, to support our graduates from the master's program in December through bridge activities and through other segments that we've activated of our leadership pipeline. The third performance objective is a realization of success with our professional learning communities. That's 1.3. And this is very specific to our leadership definition in the segment and the category of planning for success. So the PLCs also correlate with student outcomes and staff development in terms of our superintendent's SMART goals. Performance objective number four is improving systems in the area of student programs to be evaluated and implemented with quantifiable summative evaluations. 
And that correlates with our student outcomes and also our staff <coughs> development as well. As you look through those activities, those areas fall under Executive Director Dr. Maxwell and the programs. And in each of our performance objectives, you'll find that one of the Executive Directors or Assistant Superintendents will be overseeing that work in those areas. For performance objective number 1.5, Dr. Bowen will share her piece with you. Good evening. So performance objective 1.5 focuses on the administrative selection process. Based on the feedback we received from Holsworth, we learned that our administrative proce selection process might not have been as transparent as we thought. So we are working to rectify that. And we're doing that in kind of a three-prong approach. The first is that we've established a committee, and they are collaborating and using best practices and research to establish and or to provide input to develop a new selection process. The second piece is we'll be working with community relations to develop a communication strand so that we are not just having a new process, but we're actually sharing it so that it becomes a little more transparent. And then lastly, we're going to obtain feedback via the Holdsworth survey to determine how we're progressing on that. Goal two is, as Ms. Vogt mentioned, focuses primarily on reviewing initiatives and systems to increase our efficacy, innovation, and financial responsibility, and how that relates to human resources. The very first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be reviewing our internal <laughs> systems. And again, we're going to focus on three primary areas. The first is our onboarding process. As a growing district, we hire a few more individuals than we've hired in the past, and we're looking to create efficiencies in our operations of bringing people on board and ensuring that their employment verification, their credential verification, and their degree verification are done in a timely manner so that they receive the correct pay and are identified correctly in our payroll system. The second area of focus is what we refer to as the personnel action process, and that's when we assign individuals and assign pay to individuals in the system as well as any changes that they might make throughout their career, be it in position, subject taught, degree earned. Again, we've got a somewhat cumbersome process, and we're going to work to see if we can streamline that to make <coughs> it more efficient. And then the very last thing we'll be looking at is our staffing processes for allocations and guidelines. We're going to continue to use our demographic data and our trend data to make sure that as a growing district, we're staffing in a manner that is equitable and efficient and ahead of the curve so that our staffs are, hopefully we get everything correct and then we're ready to go prior to the start of school. All right, I'm a little behind on the clicking. Um, and 2.3 brings up financial, so that would be Ms. Ludwig. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, sorry. Teaching and learning, Ms. Ludwig will be here momentarily. <laughs> Wait. She's not going to do teaching and learning. She's going to stick to finance. I threatened her with that. <laughs> Um, performance Objective 2.0 is under Teaching and Learning Department, and essentially what we're doing in that area is reviewing and evaluating usage and efficacy of all of the program systems and structures that fall into our particular area there. The reason we're doing this is that this is very um, there's a lot of synchronicity between doing this at the same time as we're doing the strategic, uh, a new strategic plan. It gives us the complement of our community feedback to work with it as we review and look at these programs. Some of the examples that we'll be looking at is measuring the return on investment in all of the instructional software programs that we use. How much do they cost? Examining our usage report impact on student learning and activities such as that. We'll also be looking at our teacher induction program. We've instituted in our leadership pipeline feedback loops that we, after every meeting, every training session we have with our new principals, we ask them very specifically, what made this worth your time? And it's all anonymous, and how could we improve this training? What did we leave out? How could this be more helpful to you? So each of our activities that we're doing in this area, and it's a very broad area because we'll be covering our core content areas, our upper level courses, curriculum and development, software usage, librarian performance, all of the different areas within teaching and learning. And with that, it actually is the time for Ms. Ludwig and Ms. Hack to take over. Thank you.
Good evening. Uh, Ms. Hack and I will cover uh, uh, performance objectives 2.3 to 2.5. Um, performance objective 2.3 in the financial and support services areas analyzes processes involved in executing a purchase order. Uh, we're looking at procedures from start to finish uh, in the execution of a PO. Um, our goal is to achieve a 50% faster turnaround time in issuing a PO. Um, we'll analyze processes, software, workflows, all the, all the bits and pieces that are involved in that. We've started by uh, establishing a task force from all the different support and financial services areas. Um, we will also use outside consultants, such as Tyler Technologies, who's the vendor for our software. Um, it will be a system-wide system review, and we will also solicit input from campuses and departments. Based on the information that we receive, we'll make adjustments to procedures and or software, and then uh, we'll do the appropriate training of staff. Uh, and then also all of that will be done in conjunction with uh, establishing a new uh, standard operating procedures manual. Performance objective 2.4 is support services department. Um, the goal is by May of 2019 that we have completed a comprehensive facilities review and have a strategic, strategic plan uh, for the future for the update and maintenance of existing district facilities. The first step is to select a, an architect and from a list of pre-approved architects that we already have. This will be coordinated by the facilities and planning team. Um, once the architect is selected, they will work in conjunction with the facilities and planning team to develop, uh, to review all the existing facilities and to come up with a plan for future needs. Once we have that uh, review completed, a task force will be created from a variety of the support service department personnel. And the outcome is to determine with our existing facilities um, what will require bond resources and then what will require existing local funds. And with that, another outcome is a deferred maintenance um, plan through the maintenance and operations program. Department. Performance Objective 2.5 uh, establishes a multi-year forecast of revenues and expenditures, also looking at our current and future reserves. We're going to incorporate key metrics in our analysis, legislative actions in the, in the upcoming session, appraisal district, demographic, and economic data. Uh, we will be focusing on the major sources of revenue, which will be state aid and local taxes. And then uh, we'll be doing a multi-year expenditure projection. We'll focus uh, in large part on personnel costs since they represent 85% or more of our budget. We'll use the personnel projections that uh, are worked on and developed in our performance objective 2.1 that Dr. Bowen covered. And we'll also analyze long-term costs of benefits, consulting, supplies, and materials. We'll do that um, while considering reserve uh, future and current fund balances, future <laughs> facilities costs, and in the impending changes in the financial accountability system. <laughs> And goal three is all students and staff will continue to learn and work in a safe and responsive environment to student needs. There are two performance objectives uh, in this area. Performance objective 3.1, by June 1st, 2019, all safety and security procedures will be thoroughly reviewed. And a minimum of three intentional strategies will be deployed to help create a safer and more responsive environment for all of our students and staff. Uh, our school safety coordinator, Dallas Warren, has been working with our principals. He's already set up a drill schedule uh, and a reporting schedule that he updates every single week. I know the board has received information on both uh, the classroom intruder lock sets or homeland security lock sets and also uh, the buzzers at all of our front entry vestibules. Those electrified locks are actually being installed right now, uh, and the lock sets are being scheduled to be put into place before this next semester. Um, the Raptor visitor registry system we've talked about, which is essentially different alerts or panic buttons. That software is being programmed right now, and training for our front desk reception uh, is will be this coming week, so that will be in place as well. 
And then the SRP, which is the training that uh, our school safety coordinator has been working on, that will be expanded to all of our non-campus facilities throughout this school year. So other than campuses, facilities such as Brazos Crossing or the Development Center, et cetera, would have those same drills in place. Performance Objective 3.2, by June 1st, 2019, implementation of the Lamar CISD Whole Child Safety and Wellness Program will have been successfully deployed in grades K through 12, as evidenced by a 10% reduction in self-harm behaviors. Our campus counselors have already uh, provided a list and a log of their activities, and they have had some task reassignments to ensure they're getting back to actually counseling and implementing this whole child safety and wellness program. Uh, Campus counselors have been instrumental, obviously, in our brand new Character Counts program. They've been working to implement that. That will continue throughout the year with both monthly classroom visits and active follow-through supports. Uh, And then also Dr. Roberts, I believe, mentioned to the board about their brand new student services app. That has been deployed. It has a connection for our students, both for crisis Uh, hotlines uh, such as bullying or suicide, and they'll get some baseline data throughout the year uh, through this 18-19 school year to see how that's been working. That is a quick synopsis of the three goals of the district improvement plan. If the board has any questions, we're all prepared to answer those at this time. I have a question for Dr. Bowen. Um, A couple of years ago, um, we, I think, approved, maybe purchased some type of software that um, I believe had some of the abilities of what you were um, referencing to as far as being more efficient and some of the things that you were hoping. Have you found that that's not the case? Are we going to have to look at something different to help you do what it is that your, your goal is? No, we're actually currently utilizing the software and we're referring to the units, our finance payroll system, as well as Winocular, which is our applicant system and our employee document storage. The issue is, is as we've grown, we've maximized those efficiencies, and now we're just looking to add more. As I shared with Dr. Randall this afternoon, we've automated 57 processes since we've installed the, okay. those, um, both of those pieces of software. So we're continuing. We're looking to do a little more. Does it have everything that you need, or are you going to have to look? Brother. We're, we're starting uh, with Winocular. The answer is yes. They've been very responsive to what they haven't had with Munis. To be honest, it's kind of met our needs. We haven't really tested the boundaries of it yet, and so that's where we're starting, and that's exactly the processes we're talking about this fall. And so I think they've been pretty responsive to us, so I can't see that it will be an issue. Okay. So, in other words, so far, so good. Okay. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? A couple of comments I'll make. Um, I, I really like this approach. I, I appreciate you tying it to Dr. Randall's smart goals. That's very helpful, aligning them under what he's what he's committed to do. Um, maybe I just don't remember previous plans, but to me, this was a lot more focused. This has this is not. The, I used to sell a squashy stuff, and I said, I don't know exactly what you're going to do. <laughs> I go this, through this plan and say, Okay, I understand that software. You know, is it paying back for what we're putting into it? One of my pet peeves, the long-range planning for our facilities. Okay, now we're going to start looking at all these other facilities. So I, I really appreciate the detail that's gone into this. To me, it's much more focused than it has been in the past. So thank you for the hard work. It's excellent. It really is. Thank you. For just a compliment, I'm impressed with how quickly all the security items that we've talked about, you know, just throughout the summer. I mean, like, this is very fast that, you know, they're getting it done. It's, that's good. All right. Any comments on the campus improvement plans? Questions? You're just bursting. <laughs> no. Uh, I don't want to take a lot of time, but uh, I have a couple of questions. I'm going to try to get my thoughts together after all my little other episodes. In, in getting and in looking at some of these reports, um, I was. Well, I'll just start with the first one, or the second one. When, when I'm looking at the different uh, submissions, every school uses a, a different uh, data source review. They're not all the same. And I'm trying to understand because I hear some parents saying, you know, why can't every school be judged the same way? And yet when I'm looking at the information they use for the review, all the schools are not the same. They, some use 
16, some use five. They use different resources. Is there an explanation for that? Um, I, I may need some clarification. Um, okay, like uh, the junior highs. Okay. Okay, uh, where one used uh, the STAR and al algebra data, mm -hmm. accountability reports, mm -hmm. uh, discipline reports, mm -hmm. and then another one didn't. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay. They didn't use as much. Um, each each of the campuses has a different footprint, if you will, of achievement areas where they need to grow. And so one may use Algebra 1. That may be a focus area because they, for whatever reason, they see some skill gaps in there or some work that they would like to accomplish, whereas another one may see they need to work on certain safeguards. Um, which is a term that's, that's used when you miss your safeguards. There's a threshold that you don't want to go below because you're getting into uh, kind of a fragile point in terms of achievement. So they may use a different criteria to address their safeguards. Um, a third campus may feel like, well, we've got uh, discipline under control. We've been using some methodology here that's really working well for us. We're going to turn our attention to working on this area. Campus improvement plans are supposed to be unique to each campus. There are a few common indicators that you'll likely see, for example, star results. Um, but when you break out their activities in particular, you'll see a lot of differences there based on the campus resources and the areas of need. Is that helpful? Yeah, well, I get the individual campuses' needs, okay. but I'm beginning to hear more and more people saying, well, if you're going to judge this school this way, you should judge this school this way. You should be using the same criteria. Am I getting that that's um, not a feasibility to do eventually? Um, are you talking about community members or mm -hmm. educators or? More, more the parents. If okay. my child's going to be, I want to go to this school because it's mm -hmm. better than this school. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get a, a grasp for what are they really asking for mm -hmm. so that every school, when they're doing this, have something so in common. Probably the data that they're looking at really and truly is the same judge uh, across the board, whether star results or whatever. Uh, the success of a campus from one campus to another campus uh, is, like Ms. Bolt indicated, math may be uh, an area that needs to be improved on one campus, whereas writing may be a, another area on a different campus. Mm -hmm. And so it depends on the end. That's probably almost a question we need to drill down more with the parents to be more specific about what it is that they're wanting to look at because all kids take star, and those results come across for everybody. That is a common assessment across the board. And <clears throat> so it's kind of hard to understand exactly what they're asking for there. Well, you just said the key thing, common assessment. I think that would be something I could use more with the parents. <laughs> That is one thing that's common all, all across, across the board. The board. Yes. Okay. Um, it's not like it's the school uses their, their assessments that make them unique. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I know you, we've had an explanation of this, but what does approach, meets, and masters? Um, approaches, grade level, is you have enough knowledge that you can move on to the next grade. There's, there's a lot of statistics involved in it, but in its simplest form, meets is you have met grade level expectations for that grade. Masters, you have mastered all of the objectives, all of that material. Um, masters would be considered an A at that grade level. Um, what about meets? Meets um, very generically, that would be a B, and approaches would be a C. So those are roughly, without going into the statistics, Dr. Maxwell is here. I'd be glad to have if, him drill down. If, if we're going to the ABC grading system, that's the way it would be. 
and approach are it, usually C and below? It, it, that is a no. very simplistic, no. and I don't, I okay. don't want okay. to or mean to confuse that. That's the very simplistic explanation. Um, statistically, it's a lot more complicated than that and a lot more specific than that. Dr. Yeah. Maxwell, would you like to share? So when the state looks at passing rates, um, approaches to the state means passing, uh, the way they look at it. And so what they looked at as college readiness is that meets level. What they did is they did some studies and the commissioner came out and said, felt that the meets level, if you pr hit the meets level on the STAR assessment, you have a 60% chance of going into college and being successful in that first year, where the master's level was above 75% in your core courses in college levels. And so when they looked at it, they had these uh, different three different levels. All three are passing the STAR exam, but it was more of how ready they were to, one, fulfill the next course and then be successful beyond K-12 education. In accountability, what they do is they take those three levels, the approaches, meets, and masters, and they average them together to give the campuses and the districts their domain one score or achievement. Okay. Mayor, with, that we look at the students that are approaching, do we approach them in a different way, or do we keep an eye on those kids to make sure that they maybe move from approaching to get to meets? Is that... One of our, yeah, one of our viewpoints is always growing all of our children, right. no matter where they are. If they're at the master's level, keeping them there and even going as high as they possibly can. If they're at meets, we want them to go to master's, approaches to meets, and if they did not pass, we do want to get them up to approaches. So that so, movement so of... this gives you actually more information of how to work with exactly. the different types. Yeah. With the, where the gaps are. Where the gaps are. And we not just say pass or fail, because <coughs> you don't know they passed it by the chin of the Exactly. Yes. Each teacher receives a, a Excel spreadsheet on their class that they had this year on where they were last year, how they performed, what their areas of weakness, their areas of strength are. There's a pivot table at the top where they can look and see, break out their subpopulations very easily to see how they were performing. And if we are, because we're all interested in all of our students having post-secondary readiness, uh, there are columns to indicate this is how much better they will need to do this year to increase their post-secondary readiness. So they, they receive a lot of information from the Research and Accountability Department to support their instruction for the year. And uh, one <clears throat> alternative learning center. Uh, the, the drug behavior counselor, is that the same thing as, as the mental health counseling that we've been talking about or hiring new ones? Yeah. The, uh, they, they will be uh, assisting with and supporting the same functions. Uh, this is a, the, they, they're counselors that have been placed there because we have probably more kids that get involved in stuff like that on their campus. And that's what they focus their attention on. But they also, the, the wellness program, they were very much a part of that program as well. If that's what you're asking, mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. Yes, yes. I, I, I appreciate, uh, I, I did run off some of these because uh, I can't, I'm a visual person in this. Um, I was just trying to see what difference in the schools as far as how they turned in their reports and what certain schools thought were important and some didn't, or not important. But is there some commonality of these reports? Are they given something to look at, a guideline to go ahead and fill it out? Um, or is this very generic and everybody does the same? Principals attend two different trainings. One of the training is on state and federal statutes for filling out the campus improvement plan. These are the things that must be addressed. For example, one of those things is safeguards. If you miss a safeguard, you must address it. And that's a mandate. It's good common sense, but it's also a, a mandate to, to be addressed. Um, they also attend a training on writing a SMART goal. What does it look like? Um, it's measurable. It's realistic. It's timely or time-dependent. has an end, beginning, middle, and end to it. So they do receive training three different times on their campus improvement plans, regardless of their years of experience as a principal, because each year different statutes will change and different requirements will change. 
After they complete their plan, they turn it into their assistant superintendents, and it goes also through the research and accountability department. They have a system of checks and balances where the assistant superintendent reads it as, the, as well as the uh, research and accountability department. They have Google Docs. They use Google Docs to make comments on it where they need to tweak it or they need to improve on a certain area or perhaps they've forgotten an area or neglected to address something. So they have areas where they can make comments about the strength. This looks really good. Uh, let us know. We've got some resources in this area. We can support this. And this process continues back and forth until there's like a final approval, final draft of each campus improvement plan. One last question. Yes, After all this is done for the whole year, how do we know that they succeeded? We evaluate that at the end of each year, and it's part of their summative conference with the assistant superintendents. We also visit with them throughout the year. We have a system this year where we're doing uh, learning walks where the principals in a feeder system visit each other's schools, discuss what the commonalities might be in their instructional needs, and plan for those. For example, this year after general staff um, this week, we will be meeting with our 6th, 7th, and 8th grade principals to work through vertical alignment and the things that they've addressed in their campus improvement plans. That's a lot of work. There was a <laughs> lot of data to try to digest. So what I did was sort of took a high level. I said, okay, uh, what are the student needs on each campus? You've got all these accomplishments and, and lots of other. So I said, look at student needs and then look at the four, five, or six, or seven goals. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I know we approach each campus. They have the individual issues that they're, they're addressing. It's different for different campuses. But I got an impression that our special ed has a large gap across most of the district. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is correct? That is correct. All right. Yes, sir. And what are we doing about that? We have a lot of it. I'll uh, ask Ms. Martina to join me. We're very well aware of it. Part of the gap that we're going to have to address is through the corrective, uh, the corrective plan mandated by the federal government in that particular area. So that's created some of the issues that we're dealing with. Um, the reviewing the RTI process, as you look at some of our activities in our district plan, you'll be able to see the relationship there. Katie? That's exactly what I was going to mention. It's, um, if you go back to the district improvement plan, there's kind of three phases. One is the program evaluation, so really looking at how we're serving students, both in the inclusion model and then in some of our special programs, homebound, um, life skills, SIP, the individualized programs. And then um, training pieces, so making sure our teachers have the best training that they um, can possibly attend. And then aligning our systems and structures when it comes to RTI and tracking students' um, progress and growth. And then um, just making sure that um, our ARD processes and our documentation processes are consistent and clear across the board. And so um, Dr. Mathis, our uh, Director of Special Education and I are working very closely to make sure those DIP goals are met and that the campuses are receiving the support they need with their campus improvement plan goals. Mm -hmm. okay. We're also preparing our induction 1.0 assistant principals. One of the things we're doing with them tomorrow, you're welcome to join us <laughs> if you'd like. We're working through ARD procedures and some of the special education issues with them to better prepare them for principalships. labeling the children correctly and meeting the specific needs. Because yes. I know sometimes it's just one child that can make that score yes. look horrible or make it look positive. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's really hard to specialize. Numbers. Numbers. Yeah. I said one last question, but you know, this is the right. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you're talking about special ed, how does a special ed student get into ALC? According to this report that we have some special ed students at ALC. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, that, that's not common, is it? it? It probably isn't, but one of the litmus tests that they have to pass is that the issues that they're uh, experiencing cannot be related to their eligibility 
of the student. So in other words, if a, a student has um, a psychiatric issue that manifests itself in disruptive behavior, then the child cannot go to ALC because he's exhibited disruptive behavior. That would not be appropriate. So there has to be a separation between their eligibility in special education and, and the behavior. So for example, if a student's eligibility is um, severe dyslexia and they manifest disruptive behavior, then there's really, if there's established by the art committee, there's no relationship between their dyslexia and what they did, then the consequences would be the same as if uh, they were a regular student. Okay, is that helpful? Any other questions? Thank you very much. The next item, Mr. President, is uh, we ask the board to approve the renewal agreement uh, for Edgeboria uh, Premium Suite subscription services to the Region 10 Service Center. The next item is uh, the ratify the quarterly uh, investment report. The next item is ratification of the financial and investment report. The next item is approval of uh, budget amendment request. The next item is that's the yes, yes, Captain. Sorry, page 37. The fourth budget change for funds donated to the district by outside parties that were not expended in the 2017-18. Can you explain that to me? Uh, each year we receive donations from various parties, mm -hmm. and um, they're encouraged to spend the funds within the year that, they, that we accept the donation. But sometimes, um, for various reasons, they don't get the funds spent. And so um, we roll them to the next year so that they can spend for the pur be spent for the purposes that the donor donated the funds. So we don't see those donors or those that funding, do we? I don't like like we did for PTO when they donate. Uh, uh, some of this is PTO money. You you, you saw it okay. when it came to, uh, to the board uh, you know, for approval, depending on the amount. Right. Uh, but uh, let's say that they were going to buy a scoreboard and they didn't get it done, but they were designated for that purpose and then it's rolled over. But the board has already seen those uh, donations. I guess, I guess what I'm looking at is like uh, the guidance and counseling, the health services, plant maintenance and operations. I guess I'm not getting an understanding of outside parties donating. Uh, let's see. Top, okay, so <coughs> there are in, uh, for instance, in, let me just give an example. There there were a lot of funds donated to Common Threads. Yeah. Right. And so a lot of that money is being rolled over into this year from last year, and it would be in Function 61, that 144627 yeah, so that's common threads money that wasn't expended before uh, on or before 831 of 18. So it's rolled into the 1819 year. What about like like uh, general administration or plant maintenance and operations? Um, I can grab my list and, I mean, and, I, and give I, you an I idea of some of the things it is. Um, some of the big things that funds were donated for were um, playground equipment, um, and structures, let's see. So for, for putting it in? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, marquees. That was the other. Uh, um, okay. Marquees okay. for the front of the buildings. Those were, those were really the big items. Other, other donations were smaller in amount. And um, a lot of these are actually lower than the limit that comes to the uh, by board policy comes before the board, so there there could be a lot of smaller donations. Smaller donations. As well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I understand it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next item, we ask the board to approve the resolution uh, proclaim, <coughs> proclaiming November 12th through 16th as Parent Involvement Week. The next item, we ask the board to approve the procurement method and authorize administration to utilize competitive seal proposals as a construction procurement method with the evaluation criteria attached for trailer stadium, foster high track replacement, and high school synthetic turf field. So this is going to be what, this, what they're going to use for the Yes, that's correct. We haven't Next item, we ask the board of, uh, to approve the capacity agreement, application meters, and inspection fees for MUD number five for Culver Elementary School in the amount of $45,726. The next item, we ask the board to approve cooperative purchasing agreement as a procurement method for child nutrition serving lines. The next item, we ask the board to approve PBK Sports for the design of high school football Turf fields and the Foster High School athletic improvements. I, I do have a question on that. It may not be the right time, or maybe we've covered it, but just seeing how long the you know turf in our neighborhood took to go in. Do we have a time frame that we're thinking about for these to, with the least impact on on activity it, it, level it, at the? It should move a little bit faster. Than well, what we're looking at is we're working with the athletic director as yeah. well uh, to start that process around the April May mm -hmm. time frame kind of wrapping everything. and work over the summer to get it ready to go yeah. at all these. The artificial turf, right? yeah. Yes, ma'am. Synthetic yeah. grass turf. For yeah. all the practice fields. And that'll be this upcoming spring. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. That's all. Thank you. The next item, we ask the board to approve VLK Architects for the design of Fletcher Morgan Elementary School. The next item, we ask the board to approve VLK Architects for the design of Tamaran Elementary School. The next item, we ask the board to approve PBK Sports for the design of the Trailer Stadium track replacement. The next item, we ask the board to approve the petition for annexation into Fort Bend uh, uh, MUD 162 of the 130-acre track and deposit of uh, $25,000. This is the new high school site. Next item, we ask the board to approve uh, Kelly Calusa and Associates uh, survey and plant <coughs> work in the amount of $19,875. Next item, to ask the board to approve amendment number six in the amount of $21,600 to the RFQ uh, for full coverage, maintenance, and service agreements with Texas Air Systems. The next item, we ask the board to approve solid border for the purchase of uh, proof point advanced email security and professional services in the amount of $109,725. So this is to help inhibit some of the stuff that's been happening recently? <laughs> 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 yes, sir, but this was planned in the budget last year. So even before some of the recent things that we've been experiencing, this was a known thing that we planned in advance for. Okay. Just don't press the green button. Right? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The next item, we ask the board to consider approval of the purchase of an um, uninterruptible power supply, UPS, and installation services from microintegration not to exceed $80,000. And the next item is to approve the appraisers who have recently become certified and are new to Lamar CISD.
Those are all of the action items, Mr. President. All right, do we have any audience patrons on the action item? There are none. Thank you. All right. And um, we'll answer any questions anyone has about any of the uh, information items with the exception of the pre-kindergarten, and that we will do uh, Thursday for presentation. Can I ask how was it West Dorp attending next time? Yeah, Westendorf had a good group. They had a good crowd. Uh, Do we have a number? 39. 39. Yeah. And, and, and they were engaged good. the entire time. I thought some people could watch this. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, comments, bring for the board? If not, this meeting stands adjourned at 715. Thank you.